Hey everybody, welcome back to Weld.com. So you may be wondering why the hell we cut up a perfectly good C-clamp. Well, we made a half clamp. We're going to show you exactly how to use it and how to build it. But before we get into that, we want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped.com. So over the Thanksgiving break, I was reviewing some of the comments on some of our previous videos, and a couple people, they recommended to me that I should shave. You know, so I talked to my wife about it. She said, you know, it probably wouldn't be such a bad idea. Some of my buddies, you know, they're all shaving. Cameraman even recommended it to me. So, you know, I went ahead and did some research, scoured the web pages, come across some YouTube videos, and that's where I found manscaped.com. So I decided, why not? I'm gonna go ahead and take the plunge. There's nothing like a freshly shorn scrotum. It's breathtaking. I suggest you try it. And that's why I went with the new Perfect Package 2.0 from manscaped.com. It comes with all these fine products you see here. And now includes the Lawnmower 2.0, which lasts up to 60 minutes on a single charge. Perfect for a Sasquatch like me. And then I mentioned that Manscaped.com is the only one with the nick your sack, send it back, money back guarantee. No picks required. And it's TSA approved for those of you who want to shave your nuts on the go. Don't forget to go to Manscaped.com and use Weld20 at checkout for 20% off and free shipping. Now let's build something. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need is an old C-clamp. Uh, you can pick these up at yard sales, you can go to the store and buy one, whatever the case. Uh, old ones from a yard sale work pretty good. You know, that's kind of what I recommend, go look around. You're gonna need about a three inch piece of angle iron, cutoff wheel, a couple of welding rods, marking tools, welding machine. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come back and I'm gonna cut it, let's say about here. I'm gonna cut this off with a cutoff wheel. I'm gonna weld it to this piece of angle iron. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this back a couple inches. I mean, you don't have to measure them, I'm just gonna eyeball it here. What I don't wanna do is cut it off flush with the end because that's all the stroke that I have in that bolt there. So I'm just gonna move this back probably two to three inches from the end. And you, you know, you're making your own, adjust it to where you think it's gonna work well. So I'm gonna use this square right here. Uh, we made this in a previous video. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. We just cut down a, uh, a speed square, rounded the corners off. Uh, it still works good for this. It's a smaller area, so I'm just gonna lay this out right here. This is gonna give me a couple couple lines to cut as I uh, get rid of this with the cutoff wheel. All right, so I got this set up in the vise. I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these furred cutoff wheels. You guys can use a port band saw, whatever you have at your disposal. I mean, even if you have to, you can use a hacksaw, but you know, whatever, uh, whatever means you have at the house, feel free to use that. All right, so as I'm cutting, notice I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on the blade. I'm letting the cutting wheel do all the work. Okay, you wanna let the wheel do the work. That's what it's designed for. You're gonna get better results. It's gonna last a lot longer. You're gonna get more cut life out of there. If you just, you know, start removing material, move the blade up and down or across the piece and just take tiny strokes out of it. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the paint off the interior area uh, where I'm gonna be doing all the welding at. Same thing if you guys uh, bought an old one, you got rust on there, go ahead and clean all that rust off, take it down to good clean base metal. All right, so I went ahead and used one of these polyfan curve wheels because that's gonna allow me to get in here and use that contour. You can use whatever, you can use a hard rock on here if you want. This is just one of the tools we like to use around the shop for getting into corners, uh, especially a radius corner because it cleans it up really nice. And um, I mean, especially if you have to remove a lot of material or paint, it does a good job either way. And then I went ahead and beveled this, that way the angle would fit in there a little bit nicer. All right, I don't have that whole lot of rocking back and forth, it's just gonna give me a nice, nice fit up in there. All right, so as you can see, I went ahead and got all the mill scale and everything cleaned out in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and set this piece right up on top of here. I've got the mill scale cleaned off the back side. So when I put it up here, I got nice shiny metal on both pieces. I'm gonna put a tack here, and then I'll get this thing kind of squared up. And you can eyeball it center, you can put a tape measure on it. Either way, it's not gonna make a big difference. Uh, so I'm just going to do a tack, kind of get everything eyeballed into place, and then we'll start welding it out. So I'm just going to use a regular 7018 332 rod. I'm running about 95 amps. Regular A36 steel to forged steel. Uh, it works pretty well. I've welded up hundreds of these, haven't had any problems with it. So we're just going to go ahead, and then uh, that's what we're going to run. All right, so it's pretty squared up. So I'm going to go ahead and make like a little weld right in here, get that cleaned up, and then we'll go ahead and weld the whole thing out.
All right, so you're probably wondering why I destroyed a perfectly good C-clamp. And the answer is, I used to use these a lot when I was uh, doing structural steel and iron work. So, no, this is nothing new. It's probably been around a lot longer than I have, but I figured I would pass it on to you guys. It's something you may not run into on the everyday. I used to use these a lot doing structural steel and iron work, hanging uh, square tubes to the wall to hang uh, stair stringers from, or perimeter angle around the side of the building, or plate alignment. We use this a lot for plate alignment. So as you can see here, we have like a little mocked up piece simulate, you know, plate doesn't always come in straight. So what you would do is you would weld this side to the deck right here. And we're not gonna weld all the way around. I'm just gonna weld it on this side and I'll show you why here in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack this. What that's gonna allow me to do is drive this piece of metal down flush and flat, almost like a plate dog. Um, but I get a little bit more force with this and I'll be able to align this plate with another plate and weld that up or, you know, just push this into position where I need it to. Cause like I said, material doesn't always come in straight. So as you can see, you don't need much weld there. I only have about three quarters of an inch. And I have it on this side because the pressure is gonna be going in the opposite direction. So I wanna hold this end down. If I weld it back here, it's gonna break. So that's quarter inch plate right there. So, I mean, that, that would hold it down. Now I'm back to flush. I could go ahead and weld this in wherever I need to. This works good on uh, misalignments. Uh, you can use this in place of a, a, a dog and a wedge. Uh, it's just a really good alternative. And the cool thing is, once you're done with this whole thing, you unscrew it, obviously this plate would remain where it's supposed to be. Just grab it by the handle. Because I only welded on one side, it pops off real nice and clean. Take a grinder to this part right here, clean this back up, throw it in the gang box, it's ready for another day. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. We appreciate the support. Hopefully you learned something along the way. Uh, go ahead and put this into your toolkit. You know, go ahead and build one for yourself. Don't forget, if you're tired of nicking your nuts, go to manscaped.com and use code WELD20 at checkout for 20% off and free shipping. Until next time, make every weld better than your last. Here you go, Mike, for sale. 1982 Chevy El Camino, AKA the Chick Magnet. <laughs> the car got tons of chicks for me in the 80s and it will get the ladies running to you too. Needs new engine, tires, and paint job. $1,000 or best offer. Call Stan. Oh, Todd, here's one for you. Women seeking men. I come from Ukraine and I seek man who has sugar and his father. I wear nice clothes and I let you buy me fancy dinner diamonds in exchange for true love. No games, please. Married men, okay. Natasha. Does that interest you at all? Hey, Mike. What's a seven letter word for an individual who asks ridiculous, obnoxious, or irrelevant questions. This is often chronic behavior. An asshole. <laughs> what do you call a computer that is exclusively used for porn? A Jackintosh. <laughs> all right, I'll be here all week.